Town Clerk would call the roll, please. Chairman Swift Kayata. Councillor Barry. Here. Councillor Carson. Here. Councillor Fritz. Here. Councillor Lynch. Here. Councillor McGinty. Here. And Councillor Robert. Here. Do we pledge allegiance to the flag? I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The meeting this evening is a single item agenda um, to uh, address a sewer issue up on Montgomery Terrace and Glen Avenue. Uh, people in the audience will be given an opportunity to speak if they would like, although we would ask that you keep your comments to f five minutes or less. The, uh, and the comments need to be germane to the sewer issue only. Uh, the placement and location of where that should be going and we would appreciate if everyone would keep that in mind having said that i would ask the uh, town manager if he would give us uh, an update of where we're at and what the council needs to do yes thank you mr chairman pro tem uh, this has been a very difficult issue in uh, absolutely the most for the palmquist who live at 16 glen avenue beginning in mid-February uh, there was a sewer back up in their basement uh, with a sewer line that feeds uh, that takes the flows from Montgomery Terrace and also I believe from the Palmquist property themselves the line was blocked up and eventually uh, caused some environmental damage in their basement which has resulted in considerable uh, it, uh, inconvenience for the Palmquist and also without question the need for a long-term solution to the issue it involves a sewer pipe that's apparently been in place since around 1925, so now over 75 years. Uh, it has unfortunately taken a while to try to figure out solutions for the town council to consider. Uh, it in has involved some surveying on the site, as well as TVing of the current lines, uh, looking at uh, how we might serve uh, the, the area differently. Steve Harding is here, who is our, our town engineer whose firm has been doing most of the work studying this, and in back of him is Bob Malley, who is here in his capacity as sewer superintendent, uh, one of his titles. And what I might ask uh, Steve to do at this point, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, absolutely, uh, is to give an overview of the issue where it stands at this point and the alternatives being considered. <laughs> yes, you may. And would you like to be recused? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. um, I apologize for being late. The time got away from me tonight, but um, I just wanted to let everyone on the council know, and whoever of the audience or are watching on TV, that I'm recusing myself on this matter. I didn't know if it had been mentioned since I was unfortunately late. But um, I have a family member who has direct interest in this matter, and so I am not participating in any discussion or votes on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. I believe we need, do we need to vote to, excuse, all right. Um, can I have a, a motion to excuse? I move that uh, yeah. with Kayata be uh, recused uh, uh, voting on this matter. I take any part. Second. And a second. Uh, any discussion on that? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Steve, back to you. Thank you, Councilor Roberts. Uh, my name is Steve Harding. I'm a town engineer. I also work for Oast Associates. What I wanted to do is try to give you a brief overview of where the existing conditions are and then kind of go through three of the alternatives that we've been looking at. Uh, basically, what I have before you is a plan that shows the neighborhood. We have Shore Road, which runs uh, in this direction here, and off that is Montgomery Terrace. There's also Glen Avenue, which loops around and comes ties back into Seaview, which would be down here. And then Ottawa Road, which dead ends here. Seaview would actually wrap around here, though it's not, not shown on the, uh, the map. Uh, the green that's on here, the green lines are the sewers that are in the area. There's the Shore Road interceptor, interceptor which picks up a lot of the sewerage on this side of the of Shore Road. There's a gravity sewer, uh, yeah, a sewer that flows downhill in Montgomery Terrace. It serves the five uh, lots in Montgomery Terrace, and it flows downhill, and it goes underneath the Palmquist house here at 16 Glen Avenue. 
Uh, that's the gravity line into Glen Avenue, and then that line goes cross country over to Ottawa Road. It goes into a sewer uh, in Ottawa Road, and then it's eventually done, uh, dumped into the pump uh, station here, which is shown in blue. There's also another line in Ottawa Road, which collects sewage from this area, and it goes cross country. We think now it probably ties in behind uh, house number 15 and, and ties into Ottawa Road that way, although right now we're showing as a straight line. So uh, that's all, those are all gravity sewers. The problem that Mike described was a blockage in Glen Avenue which blocked this line and led to the backup in the basement area of the Palmquist home. Um, so we've been looking at three alternatives. Our first focus was try to resolve something to do uh, to get the sewer so it's not underneath the Palmquist house, and then recognizing there would be a, a second step that would need to be followed in order to complete the process. first alternative that we looked at was uh, something that could be immediately done. Uh, basically, this is a blow up of the area. We have Montgomery Terrace here, Glen Avenue here, Auto Road here. This would... Uh, Steve, if you'd like, I think you can turn it that way a little bit further. I'm trying to get it in the location. You, you, you might point from the other side, too. It'll be... Okay. The microphone's <laughs> up about there. All way. kinds of tips. <laughs> you can't look at it this way. Um, basically, this is a, a scenario which would reline the existing pipe underneath uh, the Palmquist home. Now, by doing that, it's a, it's a process that is a no dig. That is, you wouldn't necessarily have to dig up the pipe in order to, to do this work. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a mold that goes inside the existing pipe. It has a, a resin uh, on, the in, on the interior of the pipe that would attach to the interior of the existing pipe and then it gets molded through and as that hardens you basically get a, a pipe within a pipe. Uh, it's, it's probably a solution that would last 20-25 years um, but it, under this scenario you would uh, take it back here at the, the uh, sewer that's the sewer manhole which is actually on the Burks property which is at the end of Montgomery Terrace. We would reline that solid line there and that would, uh, would be the immediate solution and then we know we have to do something to the line from the manhole in Glen Avenue over to Ottawa Road. We tried to get the, uh, the, the water district, tried to get a television camera through that line. There's a lot of roots in the line, a lot of blockages. So that would be another part of this puzzle as far as solving that problem. Um, the advantages with this, like I mentioned, it's a no-dig solution. It's immediate, something that could be done relatively quickly. Uh, the disadvantages is that you still have the sewer underneath the house. There's no guarantees that what happened in mid-February wouldn't happen at some point back, uh, back in, or in the future. Uh, you'd also need easements from the Palmquist and the Burks in order to do this. Uh, so that's the, the first alternative that we looked at. second alternative that we looked at was to pick up this gravity line as it goes on the Burke's property onto the Palmquist was to pick it up and then reroute it so that it would go uh, we wouldn't go underneath the house anymore and then we tie into a sewer here uh, again the bold line is the immediate solution and the dash line is another I mean, we know we'd have to upgrade that line and it actually, it actually flows this way to Ottawa Road. Um, there's several different ways you could go across the Palmquist property. One of the disadvantages of this solution is it's a pretty invasive solution. Uh, we'd have to uh, do some pretty, pretty um, radical disruptions of the property. We thought about coming down here in a straight line and trying to tie it into the other sewer. Um, that, that wouldn't work or it would also involve a lot of construction. We have some retaining walls some decks and so the topography is, uh, is pretty tough. Um, we would also have to come back in here and provide a sewer uh, service for the Palmquist. We would rebuild this line back to the, the right of way and the Palmquist could tie into that sewer. Again, we know we have to upgrade this line and also that line going to Iowa Road. So the uh, advantages um, of this scenario is that the, the flow would still be a gravity system much like it is today. 
Uh, you would need an easement from the Palmquist to make this connection work. Um, and the, there's, uh, the flow would not go underneath the house. <laughs> um, that's, that's the advantages of this system. Uh, the disadvantages, um, it's fairly in invasive to the property. Uh, we know that we've got steep slopes and likely ledge in the driveway here. And we also know that this line that we're tying into is real shallow. It's about a foot and a half deep right now, so uh, Steve, very shallow. Excuse me, does that line um, start at the Burks then? How does... The line is actually a gravity line that goes all the way down Montgomery Terrace, crosses the Burks property. And what we would do under this scenario is intercept it before it went underneath the Palmquist house. And we re reroute it down this driveway. And what do you, would you define what you mean by this would be a really invasive solution? Um, it's, it's, a, it's a solution that's going to require a lot of excavation. There's a lot of improvements here. We'd have to tear up their driveway. There are some trees. There is a small outbuilding here we'd have to try to avoid. Um, if we came directly across their property, it would be even worse. We've got a retaining wall. We'd have to cut through. There's a deck. You know, there's just a lot of obstacles there and they're definitely going to know that we were there. Steve, there was either a maple or an oak, a big huge tree. Yep. Could that be impacted by either of these routes? Um, it's right on the corner of the driveway. We would obviously try not to impact it, but there'd be no guarantee that we wouldn't be able to, uh, that we would be able to build this without uh, hurting that tree. Uh, its canopy is, is pretty large and the, the rule of thumb is that you'd want to stay outside the drip line, which would be very difficult to do under any scenario there. Um, the third alternative that we looked at was a scenario where instead of letting the gravity line go this way, we would actually pick it up and or the sewage and we'd actually pick it up and go this way. There are four and tie it into the shore road interceptor. There are four houses on Montgomery Terrace that would still gravity drain to the sewer and still drain much like they do today. The Burke's house at the end of the property, because it sits down on the hill, we would have to install a pump station on their property, a residential pump station, and that would uh, operate so that it would pump the flow up to the cul-de-sac <coughs> manhole, and then it would gravity drain from there. Uh, again, we'd have to provide the Palmquist with a sewer service to the right-of-way and upgrade that line going to Ottawa Road. Steve, two questions. If the water is now flowing towards um, Glen Avenue, what do we need to do to make it flow the other way? And um, how large and how much, how visible is a pump station? Well, the, the answer to your first question is it would still be a gravity feed from the back of their house, much like it does today, and ties into this line. Our hope would be to pick up that, their service and build the pump station right where the existing sewer is today and try to use that alignment as a, a means to get our, our force main back to the, to the road. Uh, and answer your question, uh, and ask how, how high it has to go, it's about a 10 or 15 foot uh, lift from the back of their house. I was talking about the other houses along Montgomery though. If they're now flowing towards the water, how would you get them to flow towards Shore Road? Um, basically, we'd rebuild the sewer, so instead of it sloping from the shore road towards the cul-de-sac, it would slope from the cul-de-sac back to shore road. And what, by doing that, we're going to build it so it's lower than the existing sewer. Okay. So as long as they gravity drain into the existing sewer, we should be able to gravity drain to the new sewer. Go ahead. No, Marianne. Would the Burke home be the only um, home requiring pumping? Yes. Into, okay. And then who would maintain that pump station, would that be part of the town sewer I system? The town or? has offered to, to maintain the pump station. Excuse me, Steve didn't answer Councillor Roberts' question, I think, fully on what the pump station would look like. Yeah, it, it's, it's a small residential unit. Um, I believe that they're, they're three or four feet in diameter. Um, a lots of times they actually are buried. Uh, other times there's an access port that you would see on the surface. And that should be the only thing that you would see if you're walking around the property. There are, will have to be some kind of a, a line that will be like a warning system. And lots of times that's tied to a, 
a little, it looks like sort of like a meter box. There might be a red light on it that would indicate if there was a problem with the pump, if it wasn't work, operating properly. I understand there's a number of them at Cross Hill. Are they working all right? It's best my knowledge, they are. They're, they're fairly common. If I, if I can visualize it, it sounds I have a pump system for our septic, and it's buried underground, and it has a little box, meter size, I guess, that sits above ground that you can landscape around. Yeah, you could either, you could either put it near the pump station or, or remote wire it back and, and mount it on the building. Um, there may and be some distance. Has the right town there. offered to bury this? Hmm. OK, so it wouldn't be terribly intrusive. It's a matter of opinion, I guess. <laughs> exactly. I was just trying to understand the force main. Just that this is a collector system now that's going that's going that's going from the end of Montgomery back to Shore Road. Right now, it's going the other way. Mm -hmm. This is just a collector system. Where is the force main? It, it, it's after we put in the after we do this third option, it becomes a force main up to the collector system, which then runs gravity. Now the gravity system would still be from. Well, it would be from Shore Road to the center of the cul-de-sac. Yeah, and what becomes yeah. a force main then? The force main is the section that would back come from the Burks okay. pump station back up to here. Yeah. And it would only serve the Burks property. Right. Um, the, the advantages with this system is the town would only need the, the easement from the Burks to maintain the pump. Um, we would have... Uh, the flow from the pump underneath the pump with house would be removed, the pipe in that scenario. Um, you're also redirecting this flow back to a pump station down at Little John, and that helps this pump station, which has had problems in the past with combined uh, overflow problems during heavy flows. So you're taking the sewage for this house and the infiltration that's getting into this line uh, ex currently that's going down to the pump station. And you're getting rid of this, upgrading this whole new infrastructure. So we shouldn't be getting an inflow to the, to the sewer. And you're d directing that to a pump station that's better able to handle that flow. If, we, if the, uh, we're going to have to dig in the yard, obviously, for a pump station, could the barracks enter the sewer from the front of the house rather than the back to avoid we, uh, a, that kind of a scenario so that they we could do that feet as well? We could do that. If we could, if it was, I believe the Burks have a two-story house, we could handle the first two floors with gravity, but they have a basement and they have some um, fixtures in the basement. I'm going to say a wash machine and some other um, producing fixtures there. So that's why we've gone with this gravity system to here. Um, so in, o in order to do that, you'd be asking them to basically get rid of those or do something different to the facility <coughs> in the basement. All right. Anyone else? I think I've got to answer the most questions I had. Carol. I, I was wondering about the, would there be a need for a generator if the power went out? That's the, that's the major drawback with the pump station. If the power goes out, you can't use your toilet. Uh, I believe the, the town has offered to purchase a generator so that that would help alleviate that circumstance. I might, if I, I might I, add at this point. The, you know, the Burke situation is unique. Uh, Obviously, their, their property is lower than all the other properties on Montgomery Terrace. Uh, there's also an issue of whether or not they have the right to continue to go down over the hill. There appears to be a, an easement back in, from 1925, which indicates that they have that right. We, you know, as, as was mentioned, would need to obtain an easement from them. We can't force them to come with this alternative. Uh, that's, that's up to them. However, in order to encourage them, we've, we've offered them uh, several encouragements to come this way. Uh, one is that we would furnish the pump, furnish the cost of installing it. We would furnish a generator which would provide electricity for their home, uh, not only for the pump station, but also back up, some backup electricity for their home in case of outages. We also would agree to replace the, the pump station and repair it at any time it needs repair or replacement. Uh, as well as you know, doing the project in such a way that uh, you know minimizes any you know appearance of disruption. Uh, but again, you know, it, it is at their option uh, whether or not they enter what we would refer to as the new Montgomery uh, Terrace 
sewer that's proposed, or they continue to, to uh, exercise their option to, to go in the other direction. And Marianne. at this point, what, what is their position on this? They, they would have to indicate that. Like okay, to well, we're going to hear yeah, from we'll them. We'll hear from them. Steve, um, option number one, the, the broken pipe and the liner. The liner or the pipe is obviously a good, a good portion of it missing, or at least the top half of it. How do you line something if it's not there? Do we have a right to go in the property? Would the homeowner have to do that first so we could line it, or how would that work? My understanding is that there's a, a, a problem right now with the pipe. As you said, part of it's broken, and it's close to a foundation wall, and the, the plumber that is working with the Palmquist is very apprehensive about doing something to that, excavating near that foundation wall. And he's working with the, the insurance carrier to, to try to resolve that. They would first have to fix that line, and then we come in and, and reline that. And I assume that you know we have a, an estimate from the plumber to do that work, so I, I would assume that the town would probably try to use the that plumber if possible. I, I don't think it's the, uh, yeah, right now, assuming that the Montgomery Terrace folks do have the right to go down to that property, if that line was not broke, not fixed, do they have a right to go an alternative one, or do we need easements to go an alternative direction? And That's a legal question. Basically what happened is, from my understanding, is that this used to be the Cliff Cottage, I believe that. Cliff House. Cliff House. Uh -huh. I always screw that up. Um, the Cliff House used to sit here, and there was a parcel of land that went with the Cliff House. And in 1925, the person who owned that property got an easement from these folks to tie into the Cliff House sewer for any buildings that were going to be built on this property. Whether they have the right to relocate that, I'd probably have to ask an attorney. I don't know if that if the easement just went with the cliff, the old cliff house sewer or not. I know the answer to this one, but let me ask the question anyway. Do we have any easements at this point? To the best of my understanding, this is a private easement. We did look and try to find out if it had been conveyed to the town at any time. We didn't find any record of that, but I don't want to say that our search was a, a, t a title attorney search. I mean, we tried to do the best we could, but there may be some information out there that we're not aware of. All right, I think is the town manager wanted to jump in there too. No. Nothing? Is there at this right. point any option that all of the neighbors are agreeable to? I'll defer that one to you. No, you know, the, the neighbors would have to speak for themselves. We, you know, as a staff, do prefer the alternative that the town engineer has up on this board right now. Uh, it, I think it, we, you know, obviously we agree with Mr. and Mrs. Palmquist that we don't want to sewer under their home. We want to have a, a system that's for the long term, not one that's just 20 years, that might just last 20 years and put off the problem to the next uh, generation. Uh, we realize the sewer on Montgomery Terrace is 75 years old and ought to be replaced anyway. We want to remove sewerage as much as possible from where that combined sewer overflow is at at Ottawa Road. Uh, you know, for all those various reasons, uh, we believe that alternative three is the best alternative. Uh, but if, if we can, can't do alternative three without the acquiescence of the um, residents, yes. where are we left? We, we can take all of the sewerage that we are conveying in Montgomery Terrace, the town itself is conveying which is all of that that comes off from those uh, four homes. Mm -hmm. And we will be removing this under this alternative and putting it into the Shore Road sewer. We have taken care of those four homes. We've also offered what we believe is a reasonable alternative to the fifth individual. If they wish to pursue what would, what would be their private sewer continuing to go down, to Glen Avenue through the Palmquist property, in essence exercising their rights uh, through that easement, that would be a private issue between them and between the owner of the, the Palmquist, mm -hmm. the, the owner of the, uh, the property in, in, you know, now that where that original easement was in 1925. You know, we would encourage them to come this way. We have all the rights to do what we want in Montgomery Terrace. And it, it does feed by gravity, and it does remove uh, four-fifths of the problem. And in, in essence, what is the municipal responsibility, because we would no longer be conveying sewerage uh, down the public right-of-way uh, 
to you know what what may be a public uh, what may be a private easement if there are no further questions but we can let the public speak but don't go too fast Steve I suspect we'll be getting back to you if there's anyone from the public that would like to speak uh, please step to the podium uh, give us your name and your address and as I indicated before please limit it to the construction uh, aspect of this project and the podium is all yours. Just step up there and have your say. I'll leave to the chairs. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Jay Burke, and my wife and I, Karen, own the residence at San Martin Terrace. Um, I'm assuming in your packets you all have our response to the information. Yes. I'm going to read something briefly. Everything that we have to say, everything that we've done, is in that letter. The town council will have to make a decision. That's why you're elected to represent us. I'd like to thank Mike McGovern and the council for including our concerns and us in the planning of this project. We have consulted, at our own expense, an independent engineer, a plumber, and an attorney that has expertise in this field. After reviewing the same information that was put before you, it's been unanimous consensus to work with the first two alternatives. I assume that's why the last alternative is the least palatable to me, because it's the third alternative. We have responded in writing to the alternatives presented to us by the town. You should have a copy, as we just discussed. The current system has been in place for 75 years. I would hope that the council would only consider and approve a plan that would offer current and future residents of the community equal consideration. We appreciate the town's offer to bear the financial responsibility for the installation and maintenance of a pumping station on our property. But we are obviously concerned about the impact of the value of our property with such a device installed upon it. Do you have any questions or comments relating to our letter? Sitting over here, we'll really answer them. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak? Jim Spaulding, uh, 5 Montgomery Terrace, and neighbors to uh, Jay and Karen. Just two specific questions to, to the options. Really, the third option is the only one that directly affects us, and that would be that uh, the word invasive is used a lot. But it, uh, my question is, would the invasion be back to the foundation of the home on Montgomery Terrace in order to replace the sewer system of the five homes on the street? Steve, could you answer that question? And my other question, just so that we don't jump back and forth, would be that um, as a mutual concern in the community, in looking over the plans and finding out that, that maybe this work should have been done a long time ago, is that if there are overflow problems currently in the Ottawa Street area, and there is really no new home building in our small, tightly knit neighborhood, then how do you know that if you reverse the flow back to Little John, that you won't have the same problem there. Thank you. The answer to the first question is uh, the sewer services that we would be replacing or upgrading, with the exception of the Burke's property, we would take those to the right of way and tie into your existing sewer service. And that's something we've typically done in all the sewer um, upgrade and improvement projects that we've undertaken in the last five years or longer. Uh, the second uh, question that you had regarding the Ottawa Road sewer uh, pump station overflow problem, that's been a historical problem that the Portland Water, Water District's been very uh, excited about, and that's why the town has undertaken the improvements in Cottage Farms Road in Birchwood, in Maplewood, and I believe in Forest and Elmwood over the last five years. Those projects not only upgraded sewers that were 90 years old, but in doing so, they reduce the amount of groundwater infiltration, which is, is really the, the root of the problem. Uh, the, the town back in the mid-70s went through a combined sewer separation program where they took the storm drain systems out and actually installed this pump, uh, pump station back at that time. Uh, Little John Sewer hasn't had a pump station there, hasn't had the problems with the overflow. I feel there's a, a greater capacity there. 
and as the gentleman mentioned, the, there, the chances of building onto the, or expanding the sewer zone that that Little John sewer is going to serve are, are relatively uh, small. I mean, the, there's not a whole lot of, of uh, future capacity that I think needs to be added to that. So. Steve, could you explain in 100 words or less why it's important to separate the, stu the sewer systems, the stormwater and sanitary? Law. Hmm? One, it's against the law. Um, basically, the reason we do that is to reduce the amount of flow that the pump station has to handle. Uh, when you have heavy, intense rainstorm events and you're, and you're trying to treat sewage and stormwater, you've got a base flow in there that you don't need to treat stormwater. You really don't need to treat for your uh, treatment plant. And when that happens and you get a heavy rainstorm event, it just over, overburdens your pump station and then you have the goes out the, the bypass and directly into the ocean. Very good. Thank you. One, one other piece that Mr. Harding didn't answer. The, to Mr. Spaulding's question. The sewer line that goes from Montgomery Terrace down to the Little John Road pump station, what's the vintage of that line? Uh, the Shore Road Interceptor was put in in 1975. And that is... That's not the combined, that's a separated system? That's a separated system that was done back when the town went back to uh, separated systems. Thank you, Steve. Spalding. <laughs> Just as a, as a quick follow-up, and I, I asked this question for myself and the other four people on the street, and uh, Jay had the same question immediately. Is, uh, you mentioned that it would be from the right-of-way out. And we're somewhat confused on our street as to where the right-of-way is, as are the town snowplows. After they took the sidewalks out on the street in that very small cul-de-sac, um, we're not quite sure where the town right-of-way starts and where our lawns start. Um, so that was my question, because if you look closely at uh, proposal number two, uh, it has plans for reseeding and loan. And in plan three, with five houses entailed, there are no dollars set aside for that. So that's a question that uh, has been vague in the, in the mind of the town and I think in the neighbors as well. Could Steve or Bob perhaps? Steve? Yeah, we think that uh, as, a, as a rough estimate, we'd use six feet off the edge of the pavement. Um, obviously, any lawn area that we would disturb, we would loam and seed. Uh, we just felt that under this scenario, there would be less, a, a less of an impact for that than there would be under the other scenario. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Mr. Palmquist. First question, I guess, is does my email work? <laughs> yes. But I'm Ron Palmquist. Uh, my wife, Sandra, is here tonight. And we live at uh, 16 Glen Avenue. And we got a cellar full of sewer, of sewage. Uh, if you have my memo in front of you, to uh, a copy of the memo to Mike McGovern, you know what our concerns are. Uh, we feel that we have had, and, and I'm hearing this for the first time tonight, uh, we've had 75 years of passage of sewage underneath the house that we bought 35 years ago. This is an interesting piece of news to us because we never, ever would have bought a home that had a sewer pipe running underneath it. With all of the things that have been going on the past few weeks, uh, we, we feel that we have been violated by this situation and that we are in favor of anything that will remove the sewer pipe from our basement and remove the threat of any more sewage coming down, which after seven weeks is still coming down through the pipe in the basement of our house. Nothing has been done to stem the flow of the sewage. The Cape apparently has no emergency plan in place to handle the situation. We get a honey truck up there at the, uh, the manhole that is accessible above our house and do something to stop this flow. So until this is done, I see no solution to the problem. Uh, please forgive me. Uh, 
That's about all I have to say. Did anyone have I a question? Ask, I have a question for Mr. Um, Palm, Palmquist. Um, and I, I apologize. I sympathize. I can't imagine what it would be like to have sewage in your house for that long. Uh, so I know we all want to do what we can to, to fix this. What is your feeling on alternative two, which, as I understand it, redirects it. There's still a piece of the line on your property, but not going under your house. Do I understand alternative two correctly? Thank you. We have not, this is the first that we have seen of any of these uh, charts. Before I could adequately comment on that, I would have to take a look at those and see exactly, you, you use the term invasive, uh, exactly where, uh, you know, this line is proposed to go. Uh, we cannot, you know, answer a hypothetical question with, you know, a hypothetical answer. That just wouldn't be fair to you people. Uh, we, we'd have to study that and, and take a look at it. Is that something you'd be willing to take a look at? I, I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult it, time hearing Is you. that something you'd be willing to take a look at and study? Well, it's quite obvious that we want two? to do that in order to, you know, settle the, uh, settle the situation. But I'm not here tonight to name a preference, one, two, or three. D doesn't that make it difficult for us to fix the problem, though, if we can't arrive at a solution? Well, how can I make that tonight? kind of a judgment when I've, I've never seen this material before? And if you want to talk fairness, we can talk fairness. But I'd rather not do that tonight. I'm just wondering where that leaves us in trying to fix the problem. I guess I have well, a question for Steve. I, I, I've come up with a line in a letter that I wrote to somebody. Yeah, and I, I didn't know and, what that meant, the sewage and, handling intercept strategy. I'm sorry? I didn't know what your proposal in our letter meant, I guess. I, I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. I didn't know what you meant in your letter by approving, asking the town council to approve an emergency sewage handling intercept strategy. Well, the town has no emergency plan to handle sewage. And it's my suggestion that somebody in town government begin thinking about doing this. If you have a break in a water main, Workers are out in force to repair the water main, and that's clean water. The Central Maine Power Company is called to fix a uh, down power line. They are there ready to fix it and put homes and businesses back online. We have had sewage going through our basement now for at least seven weeks, uh, and nothing has been done to stem the flow. It seems apparent to me that there is a need for some kind of an emergency plan to take care of situations like this, hopefully that will not happen again. Ron, I guess I can ask you or I could ask Steve, but is there a manhole between you and the house on Montgomery Terrace where something could be intercepted? It's my understanding there's a manhole. Uh, above us on the Burke property, and one down in the street on Glen Avenue. Right, Steve is shaking his head no. Steve, could you perhaps? Ron, Ron's right. There is a manhole above him on the Burke property and on Glen Avenue, but both the Burks and the Palmquist tie into that line you know, in between there. So there isn't one that you could, there isn't a manhole that you could separate the Burks from. OK. Any further questions? <laughs> But, but Steve, the, what is running, what has caused the problem is the, is right now we could, well, I guess that's not true. We, what is really causing the problem is the sewage from the Burke House, which is flowing down there. Or is it all the houses on Montgomery Terrace? Oh. It's all the houses. So there's no way of, we're trying to find an intercept. I mean, I think Ron is right. We could, we could sit up here, but we need to do something right now immediately and then come up with our plan. But, um, Five houses that drain down. So there's no there's no catch where we can send a honey wagon. You could do it at the at the manhole, it won't solve all the problems. It would catch four of the houses. 
But it, that's what I'm trying to say. It would catch four of the houses that are presently causing the problem in the Pankwas house, but it would not catch the fifth house that's causing. So the only hmm. immediate solution would be to reline the existing line. Just to stop it. Just you to mean, stop the so flow of sewage into your house. To catch that fifth. Again, I'm terribly sorry. I, I, I guess I'm not hearing well tonight. I, I didn't hear the first part of your comment. Well, it, it, I think the question is directed more to, to Steve and, okay. and Bob O'Malley or the town manager. The question is to stem the flow of sewage into Mr. Palmquist's house as an immediate measure is the only way to do it to reline the existing pipe? If you reline the existing pipe, you'd have to repair the problem in the Palmquist basement right now with the existing pipe and then reline it. That would still, that would, that would still have flow going underneath their house. But, but not would, into their house. That's true. Well, hasn't some emergency repairs have been done? <laughs> that's where we've reached a stumbling block. We, what happened was the sewage, my understanding is the sewage backed up in the basement. The plumber removed that sewage. Uh, there were some concerns with the soil underneath the foundation. They took out a four inch slab, started excavating that material out or vacuuming that material out. When they got down to the sewer, it was broken on the top. There was a, about half of, half of the, the top of the pipe for about a three foot section was broken. Uh, Bob Malley and I, went down to the basement with the plumber. At that time, they just had a board and a raincoat over it. It's my understanding that they've gone back, put in a 12-inch um, temporary solution over the top of it to try to reduce the odors. Now, there's a problem where the line is broken in the foundation wall, and there's a concern by the plumber that he, if he excavates near the foundation wall, that they'll lose that. And that's where I understand they've had a problem with MMA and, and the insurance carrier. So, from the town standpoint, we're kind of at a standstill with that until that gets resolved. Danny? Uh, if I may speak, please, for a moment, I'm Sandra Palmquist. And I don't think it is any kind of solution to have at any time any pipe in under our house and ask us to return to it after watching sanitary napkins, condoms, sewage of all types run through our home, stench up our house, we have lived in three motels during this time, and we have been asked to move again. I don't think that we should be expected. We should get on with repairing our house. We should get on. We can hook up to the sewer and go out to the street. The other sewer needs to be completely out of our house so that our foundation, which is, has crumbled and the structural uh, part of the house is in question right now, we need to get on and work. We need to get back to our house. And having a sewer underneath that basement or inside that house anywhere is not acceptable. I cannot sleep again and worry about waking up and going down to the cellar and having that stench through our home. I am an asthmatic. I have provided the town with a letter about my doctor's medical concerns for me. She is just about wild. I don't think that is a risk that I can take again. I don't think it is fair to us, and I don't think it's, it, we have been violated. And I think we should be treated as though we have been violated. And to put another pipe under our foundation or under our basement is not an alternative of any way. That pipe needs to be removed from under our foundation. And I feel I cannot return to that house, and we should not be expected to return to that house with a pipe under the floor. And, and I agree with and you, I, and I emailed you to that effect this afternoon when I received your letter, but I'm still trying to figure out what the solution is then if we don't... Well, a liner is under. not a solution. I, I understand I agree. that. Yeah. And I don't think it's up to us to recommend a solution to you folks. No, the, the town has recommended a solution, but number I'm, three. I'm emergency plan. Your, your question related to the emergency plan that I mentioned. Uh, I guess we feel that it's kind of incredulous that there is no emergency plan in place for sewage when there is for water and electricity and other utilities. Uh, and, and that's the reason I brought it up. 
I think, I think that you're absolutely right. The town probably should do that. I, I would hesitate to say that, that I can't imagine, having dealt with sewers in my 15 years in the council, that, that there are too many places where there is a house on top of a pipe. Obviously, that is not a good situation. And I certainly agree with you, Mrs. Palmquist, that it, is not, it would be not my personal desire to leave that pipe under there. I think that my immediate question was, what can we do right now to stop it while we figure out which of those three alternatives can we do? And so the question was raised, is there something we can do to patch the pipe, to, to patch it from your cellar, to stop it while tomorrow we decide what to, solution to use? That was stop the question. Stop the some way that, that through that pipe. One of the plumbers, and I'm not advocating for any plumber, I'm not going to use a name, mm -hmm. said that could be stopped in three days' time at the top. And look how long we've been out of our house and it is still flowing through our house. There must be other alternatives besides keeping that pipe and running a liner through it. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I would not support and, that. And, and I so. think that we should be able to get on with our lives, build, rebuild the foundation, mm -hmm. get that sewer pipe out of there, and let, let us repair our home. I agree with you. I, I think all I could speak for the council that we would all agree with that. That is something we want to do. I have to say that this is the first time that the council, together, has had an opportunity to discuss this. So the alternatives came to us. We're looking at it now. We're trying to make a decision. But certainly we all agree it can't, be stay, can't stay like that, and it can't stay in your basement. And I don't so, think, that, I don't think right. the liner should be considered going down through even temporary, because that still leaves the pipe under the foundation. I want it out. All right. A town manager Fine. has... Uh, we, uh, yeah, we're, 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 this is an appropriate time for de debate you. I really wanted to ask questions. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. you know, I know the council hasn't seen the engineering details of this, but you know, I would hope that you would give some weight that it's the unanimous recommendation of your longtime public works director, of your longtime town engineer, as well as your town manager, that we solve this problem, we do it in a way, and you know, I think the problem was very rightly bring up this issue about emergency, dealing with an emergency mm -hmm. plan. It is very difficult to come up with emergency plans when you have sewer pipes going through people's driveways and under their homes. Right. The way to solve this is to have a properly engineered sewer system that is within the public right of way as much as possible and that is this alternative three. Uh, the public conveyance of sewer sh as much as possible should be in the public right of way or at least with as long standing easements that the town has. I think to not go home this evening with a solution to the palm quest saying, you know, let's continue to look at this alternative down the driveway, which the town engineer has said is not a good solution. It's, it's invasive to use his term. I think it's very unfortunate if the Palmquists do not go home this evening knowing what the answer to this is. And uh, again, we, we unanimously, having studied this, agonizingly so, and being popular with absolutely no one on this issue, uh, the more we've looked at it, we believe this is the route to go. We think we've provided some accommodations to the Burks. We know they're not totally pleased with them. Uh, but we do feel that that is the route to go so the Palmquists can get on with moving back to their home. Uh, we also, you know, would like to know the plan in place so that we can really put a candle under our insurance folks and uh, the other folks who are involved in the reconstruction of the uh, Palmquist home to say, this is the plan, this is the way it's going, get on with it, get it done. Uh, you know, there, there have been issues involving uh, you know, disagreements between the insurance company and the plumbers and, you know, it's, it's time to get everyone into a room and to hit them all over the head and say, get this solved. It's, uh, it's gone on way too long and I would hope that the council would, would act similarly and, uh, you know, enact a, pr enact a proposal that really does address this long term and uh, with the best advice that our engineers have given us. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak before we close the session? Good evening, my name is Greg Griffin. Uh, my mother and I reside at 17 Glen Avenue. Uh, we're downhill <laughs> this. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a lobsterman. If this were a boat, you guys went belly up. You sank, it's over. It's not a boat. I hope this is a positive offer. You can run an above ground line across our property 
into that pump house tonight if you want to. If that's called an easement, I can sign a document before I leave the room tonight. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Seeing none. What is the wish of the council? I guess I still have oh. a question about what, how long it will take to actually construct, say, option three. What we will do in the meantime with the, <clears throat> the Burke sewage and the home for sewage and anybody else that's disconnected, I'm not clear on that. And ask the town manager perhaps to respond to that. We have a contractor ready to go, begin work Thursday morning. They would begin on Shore Road and extend uh, down Montgomery Terrace, installing that sewer. It's expected to take approximately three weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we don't know if Burks will give us an easement over their property. You know, if not, uh, you know, they're going to have to look at developing a solution uh, going down over the Palmquist property. Uh, you know, that that's, you know, does leave them in the lurch, I understand it. But, you know, in the meantime, at least we've addressed those four properties, and I think we've given a real good option to the fifth, as well as, you know, our agreement to, uh, our offer, I should say, to the Palmquist to uh, put in a new sewer line from Glen Avenue up to their house at our expense, as well as having the, uh, you know, working with their contractor under their home to solve that problem. Uh, you know, unfortunately, because it is out of the home and, you know, the reasons uh, Mr. Yeah. Harding mentioned, you know, we're beside ourselves at to trying to figure out a way to make this happen. We think that, you know, the, the Palmquist have been through a lot of pain on this. And, you know, we, as, as difficult it is, as it is, I think another month's worth of pain for a permanent solution is a lot better than uh, no, really no solution at all as of yet. Councilor, it is about three weeks. Councilor Carson. Could I just ask um, our town engineer and our public works director to respond to the offer for a moment for Mr. Griffin offered, which, it, I mean, I, I understand what you're all saying, and I understand we're going to make the decision, and I think we may make a decision tonight, but it seems like that we should get the sewage stopped in the basement this app, you know, in an hour. So is there something that in his offer that, that is cost-effective way to stop it from going into the basement? While, I mean, while we do whatever option we choose, is there something that you can, any way you can respond to that? Or had you had it been thought of, or yeah, I, I wish it was that simple. Yeah, uh, Councilor Carson, um, we've been working feverishly on this, and uh, we've been working feverishly on this project for the last month, and uh, trying to resolve as many issues. But I, I appreciate Greg's offer. I just don't know if it's that simple. Mm -hmm. um, you basically need to vacuum or draw out the sewerage in a lower manhole, and you know take it either to the pump station or another downstream manhole. It's just I appreciate his offer. I just don't know if it's as simple as putting a hose across his lawn and if that's going to work. But if, you know, if we can get started this week on the project, uh, it's just that much quicker we can get it done. And when I, you know, Mike says three weeks, I look at that as a maximum. But, I mean, we're ready to go Thursday with this. And as we pick up each house, that's less and less flow that goes down through the pipe. And the, the pipe is actually conveying sewerage. It's not going into the house. So it mm -hmm. is conveying sewerage. And it's been temporarily capped over, but um, to my knowledge, I haven't been on the property. It's not still flowing inside mm -hmm. the house. It's flowing through it, not right. into it. Yeah, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the geography of where the Griffin's property is. It's on the opposite side of Glen Avenue, the ocean side of Glen Avenue, from the, the Palmquist property. You know, the, the difficulty isn't, you know, there's, there's existing pipe underneath the Griffin property. There's an easement there. The difficulty is getting it from the, the bot, from the Burks, the spot on the Burks property through the Palmquist property across Glen Avenue to that point. I see. You know, it's, you, Sandy, the public hearing is closed, so I, I can't have no, this big well, <coughs> I have an explanation about the pipe under the All right, house. I'll go ahead. The pipe is disintegrated step, on the bottom. Step to the mic, Okay, please. I'm sorry. The pipe is disintegrated on the bottom. There is sewage like fingers going out into our house right now. Even though it has a cover over it, 
it, there is still, there, I have pictures back there of a crack in the pipe that even if it's covered, it's still coming out. We have videotape of that pipe. That pipe has many, many issues. It is still, some of it is still flowing into our house. And if you would like to see this videotape or see our pictures, if they would be helpful, we'd be happy to show you. Thank you. Is there a counselor prepared to make a motion? I'll, I'll move that we approve option three. Do I hear a second? Alternative three. Second. And seconded by Councillor Fritz. Mm -hmm. Any further, any discussion? I, jo uh, Councillor I just, You know, there's no real, we gotta solve the, the problem of the pipe under the house, no question about that. I think everybody agrees on that. But if, if the Burks don't agree to help us on this, that's not going to solve the problem because somehow they have some right, and I don't know, legal right or easement or whatever, to, to discharge their sewerage somewhere. Um, and I'm not, I mean, I guess I'm going to support this because we've got to start to get the ball rolling somehow. But I'm not sure, and I say this to the Palmquist, I'm not sure that it's going to be an immediate solution. I wish there was an easier way, a better way, but uh, this could drag on. I think we need to re recognize that this potentially could drag on. So. Councilor Carson. I think um, that I, given uh, the explanations and the recommendations we got, we have that I would support that also. I might say to the Burks that I have four houses up in Waterford, all of them on pumps. The power goes off there several, all the time, four or five days at a time. You know, they're all, it never, it never stops us. Nothing stops us. Pumps work. It, this is, it isn't a problem. I know it's a problem if you don't have it. You know, just think about it. But it, it isn't a problem. It has never been a problem for us in many years. But given the fact that we don't know what's going to happen, even if we recommend uh, uh, option three, and maybe you've already done this. I'm sure you have. Is there some stopgap? I mean, listening to what Councilor McGinty says, is there some stopgap thing that we could come up with? To, to stop this flow from going into that part of the pipe? Um, is there, I mean, I'm sure you've, I guess you've probably tried to think of something. But I'm trying to imagine now, we don't know what the Burke's response is. We're, we're going to try and take a vote up here, and I don't know how that's going to go. But meanwhile, this situation continues to exist. So, I mean, I don't know. for a counselor. Uh, I made the motion for three because it seems to make the most sense as the town is recognized for the long-term solution. Um, I also hope that we can um, continue to try and work on an interim solution for um, the Palmquist um, and the, the Burke's um, sewage. And, um, and I would also say to the Burke's that my own septic system is on a pump and pumps uphill and it's buried and there's a little box on our lawn and it, it's, I hope it, you're welcome to come by and take a look at it. Um, I realize it's not as probably great as not having a pump, but um, I don't know what else we can do in this situation. So I hope that all the neighbors can work together to iron these things out. Councilor Barry or Fritz, anything further? Well, I, I mean, I think we do have quite a few pumps uh, yeah. throughout the town connected with the sewage system. I mean, that's just, I mean, when you have an irregular lay of the land, you have to have a pump to, you can't always do gravity feed. Um, and it seems to me that with a generator and, and landscaping, you're, you, you know, you can be assured that it, it's going to be operating properly and it wouldn't take away the value from your home. I, I don't think it's done that in the cases in Shore Acres or wherever um, the pump situation is, is set. So, I mean, I think we have some real need to fix this system um, because it is so old and, and, and getting it in the right of way, it makes the most sense. I've had a pump for about 15 years and it works fine. I think that the, uh, the situation for the Congress is intolerable. Mm -hmm. Something's got to be uh, 
done right away as soon as possible. But uh, since the, I'm no engineer, and uh, since the uh, people who deal with that have come up with uh, alternative three and the motion has been made, uh, I would support that. But I would join Councillor Carson in hoping that some immediate solution for this uh, sewage overflow and this, uh, if for people still are, could be stopped while the work is going on. I hope that the, that the engineers and, uh, and, and craftsmen can work out some solution to that. Uh, like the rest of the folks, uh, I have a pump also. We seem to have a good number of them on the council <laughs> to, to uh, pump up in my basement. And I drove down by the property and that option two, although I, I like the idea of a gravity feed, uh, I have spoken and asked several questions on it. And due to the grade, it is less than an ideal situation to try to put it down on that type of a slope. And the amount of damage it would do to either the trees or the rock walls and everything else that is there. Uh, keeping the sewer line in the town right away does appear to be the way that we have to go. Um, no matter how we vote on this, obviously somebody's not going to be happy um, or extremely pleased. Hopefully they will accept what we have to do. Um, and I guess I will support option three. I would, and if we voted for option three, I would hope perhaps the Palm Quist would be still willing to put some kind of a, even a, a, a fire hose or something down through that line that would get this stuff to bypass uh, through their cellar knowing that the other was coming and that in 15 days or 21 days that, that could then be yanked and the, and the thing blocked off and filled up. And that's something that folks could continue, continue to discuss over the next three weeks if we pass uh, this motion. And it appears we probably will. There's some um, a motion. Uh, so the motion is on the floor. Motion on the floor. Do I need a, anything to no, move the question? Move the question. No. All right, seeing that, if no one else has anything further to say, all in favor of voting uh, for option three. Show the vote to be unanimous. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. Um, I know this is not ideal for everyone, but I think it's perhaps the best we could do under the circumstances we have in front of us. Uh, thank you to the Burks for coming also. I move adjourn. Move adjourn. I Second. move adjourn. All right. Yeah. We can now adjourn to our work, regularly scheduled budget workshop. Neil. Oh, never mind.